think of the last time that you felt uncertain. It was probably pretty stressful. So when you think about uncertainty in organizations, we know that it's everywhere. And many well-intentioned leaders create uncertainty when they don't mean to. And the famous phrase for this is, I don't want to micromanage them. There are a lot of leaders that feel that providing certainty and boundaries and rules to employees is the equivalent of micromanaging them. And you have to be careful that you're not giving excessive rules or excessive clarity, but there are five actions that managers can take to increase the amount of certainty that employees feel and therefore increase their happiness and their ability to produce results. So the first area to provide clarity is in the vision of your team. And this means what's the bigger picture that you're operating under? What's the general target that your team is trying to hit? There are teams that I've worked with that have used what's called a SWOT analysis, and it can be very helpful. A SWOT analysis answers four questions about your team, and it's best to do this together with the leader and the team. Number one, what are our strengths as a team? Number two, what are our weaknesses as a team? Number three, what are the opportunities that surround us that we might be able to take advantage of? And number four, what are the threats to the viability or success of our team? And in answering those questions, typically what a team can do with its leaders' support and direction is to identify where do we want to be in the next five years? What do we want to be different in the next six months? And what's the future that we're trying to create for ourselves? The important piece, though, is having clarity around this question. Where are we headed as a team? And what's the future we want to create for ourselves? The second way a leader can create clarity for his or her team is through clarifying roles. I can't tell you how many times I've worked with teams who have told me, nobody knows what anybody is supposed to be doing on this team. And usually what's behind it is a leader who doesn't want to micromanage. So the tool that I use with the most success with teams is something called the RACI tool. And this came out of the project management literature. RACI stands for four things. And what you need to do as a team is identify for each project or each deliverable that your team is responsible for producing, what is the role of each person involved? So there are typically four roles that can be played in any project. R stands for responsible. Responsible is the person or the people who are the doers for a particular project. There are the people who are looking at the project plans, who are implementing it. And that can be multiple people. A stands for accountable. Accountable is the person, and only one person, at the end of the day that is accountable for the success or the failure of a project. So again, this has to be one person. Sometimes the accountable person can also be working on it and be responsible, but A is only one person. C stands for consulted. Consulted are the people who are part of the project, but are really just providing their opinions or their advice. And then finally, I stands for informed. Informed are stakeholders for your project. These are people who are not directly related to accomplishing it, but who may, for example, have a pocket veto. And if you're not informing them and keeping them abreast of the success of the project, that could spell disaster for your team. So as much as you can clarify which of those four categories each person on the team falls into for a particular project, you will significantly reduce the uncertainty involved and improve the results of your team. The third tool that any leader has at their disposal to create clarity is to get very clear on the results that their team needs to achieve, both individually and collectively. And goals are the easiest way to make this possible. And I'll cover two specific tools that you can use in your team in a second. But it's worth saying that goals are one of the most powerful ways that a leader can motivate behavior. And the two tools are SMART and SAIL. And I'll tell you what those mean. You've probably heard of SMART goals, our first tool. SMART goals will help you clarify the results that you're going to achieve in a particular situation. And it's an acronym, so it stands for the following. S stands for specific. Is the goal something that you'll know it when you see it? M stands for measurable. Can the goal be quantified in some way? Is there a way that you know how to see if the goal has been achieved? A is attainable. Is this goal theoretically possible for someone to achieve? R stands for relevant. Does the goal have a relationship to whatever the team is trying to accomplish? Does it matter? And then finally, T, time-based. Goals that have no time frame associated with them usually are not accomplished. So as specific as you can get about when that goal will be achieved 
in a month, in a quarter, in a year, you will be more effective. Now one note about SMART goals. I have participated and designed countless trainings on SMART goals, and it's clear that they have not, in fact, saved the world. Many people use SMART goals only to not accomplish them, and you as a leader have probably experienced this at some point. My personal theory for why this happens is that SMART goals only address one part of the people results continuum. So that's why I introduce SAIL goals as the second tool a leader can use to create results. SAIL is also an acronym. Here's what it stands for. S stands for stretch. What makes something a stretch goal is that it's very, very challenging for the person to complete. And that might sound counterintuitive, but the research on goals is very clear. We are most motivated, in other words, the human side of a goal, when we believe that there's about a 25% to 50% chance of accomplishing a particular goal. So if it's not a stretch, you're going to miss that human element of motivating that person. A stands for ability. Can that person, with a reasonable amount of coaching or training, accomplish the goal? The example I'd give you, I am terrible with computers. I could maybe convince somebody to give me a job as an IT support person. And I could have a very smart goal that I will resolve all customer complaints with their, their computers in one day. Is that possible for me to do? Can I develop the ability? Probably not. So every manager has to take a good hard look at the skills and potential of each person on their team and ask that question. Does this person have or can they build the ability to accomplish the goal? I stands for importance. Importance is a hugely underutilized motivator for goals. The research on this tells us that goals are only related to increased results when the goal feels important to someone. In other words, if they accomplish it, does it mean something? So as much as possible when you're designing goals with your employees, try to make sure that it feels meaningful and impactful to them. And then finally, L stands for learning. A lot of times this is about how you phrase the goal, but a learning goal has to be something that the employee feels like, if I accomplish this, am I learning? Am I growing? So if I'm a general manager of an auto parts store and I want to be the vice president someday, my goals might start with so that I can build the skills needed to be the vice president someday of this auto parts store. In other words, you've got to make it specific to their learning. So the fourth way a leader can provide clarity for their team is to get very specific about the behavioral expectations that that person has for every person on the team. And there's a very easy way to do this, and it's kind of rocket science. Tell them, what are the deal breakers for your team or your employees? What are the behaviors that if you see them from your employees that you will freak out? What are the ways of communication that you prefer? For example, would you rather that individuals who want to talk to you send you an email? Would you rather they schedule an appointment with your administrative assistant? It doesn't matter what you tell them, but it matters that you tell them what your clear expectations are for their behavior. Don't let them guess. The fifth way that bankable leaders can create clarity is by clarifying how the team members should act with one another. So we just talked about specifying individual behaviors. It's just as important to clarify how do you expect your team to work together. There are a bunch of ways to do this, but one tool I'd like to give you just for now is called Team Guiding Principles. And this is very straightforward. Having a conversation with your team as a leader about what are the rules of our team? What are the things that we agree have made us great up until this point that we want to continue? Or what are the things that we don't think we're doing so well that we would like to aspirationally be different? Examples of this are always return emails within a day or always assume best intent in other people on the team. So I talk about more tools in my book, Bankable Leadership, but in sum, I hope all of these five tools will help you create infinitely more clarity with your team.